you may have a case where you want to use a set of formulas in your estimating. So in other words, you might have the, if you're inserting some components in a board or something, you might have how many components, how many different types of components are in there. And from that, you've already developed a formulation that lets you just put in some variables. And from that, you calculate the, the estimated time. How do you handle that within the Timer Pro estimating program? Well, here we're on one of our tasks here. We go back to the summary page. And uh, we've already talked in a separate section about the hidden lines that are above here, lines one through seven. So again, the little trick to show them is to use the F5 and to type in one through seven, like you see here, click on the OK. That will actually select them, even though you don't see them. But then it lets you go to Format, Rows, and do an Unhide, and they will appear here. Now, to handle the formulations, we look at row six here. Check column for user formula result. So let's put an H in here. What does that mean? Well, if you look at the, the comments here, insert the comment, the column A, H through Z, that the program will check to see if there is a user-defined formula result in existing. If a non-zero value is found in that column when the cell is clicked, then it will be used as the time before frequency. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's come back over here. It's column H right now. If I go back over here, let's say you were setting up a little formula, and let's just say you have uh, so many. So here's column H, this is where the result's going to be. And in here we'll say connectors. And over here we'll say capacitors. Okay, you can have any number of, uh, of different uh, variables here. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a number in column H, uh, column J for John and another number in column L for Larry, right? And from that, we're going to develop a little formula here. So let's say you come in here, and I'm just making this up, but let's say your your formula was going to be in, it's going to be in seconds. So let's say it was 5.5 uh, uh, seconds uh, per uh, connector. So we come over here, we can do this, right? Plus, and then we're going to put however, however many capacitors are in here. So then we'll, let's say the capacitor time was 7.2 seconds uh, times the number of connectors. Right? So we have that there. So here we've got our formula defined in here. And obviously the resultant right now is a zero value. So uh, you could have any number of uh, variables and so forth and as detailed a formula as you wanted here. Here it's pretty simple, right? So here we're going to say, okay, if I was doing five connectors and eight capacitors, my estimated time is 85.1 um, here, right? Now you have that value and it's sitting in column H. Now remember column H has been defined here as a column that if we click on that column and there's a non-zero value, you can see, read it right there, if a non-zero value is found in that column when the cell is clicked, then it will be used as the time. So if I come back over here, right, and I just double click on here, it puts in the value here, you can see it. Now it says enter a description here. Right? So in other words, we're waiting for some kind of description we can use. And you might have a frequency in here, so you could put a three here, for instance. Right? You'll notice that the if I click on any cell here, those cells are actually a formula. Right? So you see the formulation right there that's showing through here. So this could be changed right here. So this is how you can get the values here. Now, so typically you might have a predefined formula in here. So if I was to copy that same formula down to the next row here, so I'm just copying them here, and I'm going to paste it in here. Right. And let's say I have this one here, I'm going to do uh, uh, six, and I'm going to do three of those. Right? So my time changes according to the formula here. And typically, you'd probably put in a, form, uh, a, a description here. Now, just to keep it formatting, we always precede our elemental uh, descriptions by five periods, just so it looks nice when they're using it. And this might be insert insertion time. So now you have a, a, a standard description for this. Uh, you would just come in, you would be putting in your variables in here, and when you finish, you just double click on the, the time that's developed and it will put it right in here for you. And you can see that's now gonna be the insertion time. And obviously, when you go back to the summary and you reset that and you summarize your sheets, the values in here would then reflect the times that would be collected here for you. Okay, so again, if you, all you can do is you can change the formula here, or the, the column with the formula resultant in it, and then you define your formula on the way out here, starting out here. Any, any number of variables, whatever you want to do, you can do here. The time will come back in here, and then simply by double-clicking it, it's going to update it here. So you can see if you change that value for another estimate, let's say it went to 9 here, right, the value here changes. 
you double click and it changes the value over here and of course those could be carried forward into your summaries just by doing a reset recalculating it to give you the new value here okay again when you finish setting this up don't forget to highlight these rows format the rows and just hide them so the casual user can't go in there and make a mistake and uh, up, you know update the uh, the working of the sheet here